House Speaker Nancy Pelosi receiving an interesting greeting in New York City as she makes a surprise appearance at a music festival. Nancy Pelosi. As you can see there, there was some booze. An interesting welcome in liberal New York City. Pelosi is really gearing up for the midterms. She's one of the first guests on the new show on Hulu, Power Trip. She showed off her fitness with a brisk walk uh, with George Stephanopoulos, talking about how Republicans are going to destroy dem uh, democracy if the power goes to the GOP in November. Midterm, our democracy, as you see, uh, because they are nullifying elections, and that's part of their agenda. The fate of the planet, which they are in denial, they're still anti-science and anti-governance to do anything about it. A pinnacle of fitness there. In the meantime, Republican leaders making the rounds on Sunday shows, touting their new plan for change. Here's Congresswoman and GOP Conference Chair Elise Stefanik earlier today on Fox News Sunday. Not only are we going to earn back the House, but we're going to earn back the Senate as well. And we will send every bit of legislation that we promised to to the president's desk. And it's up to Joe Biden, whether he works with us or whether he will play politics and veto these important bills to rein in inflation, to support law enforcement, to make sure we have a safe country and to secure the border, which is in free fall under Biden's amnesty policies. And many registered Democrats are fed up with what they call the radical left and switching parties. One switched to Republican, telling the New York Post, quote, the reason I registered as a Republican has more to do with the Democrats than it does with the Republicans. I still consider myself liberal in a lot of ways, but I'm no longer registered Democrat. They've just really gone off the rails this past several years. Uh, I would agree with that person, Guy. Um, you know, there's a poll here that just shows where the GOP is on the issues. Mm -hmm. And they're really leading. I think we've got the poll we can show here. It just shows the GOP is plus, plus five on the generic ballot among likely voters, plus 21 in swing districts. But that, if you go back to that quote, what they're saying is it's not about the Republicans' position, maybe not this new contract, uh, you know, this promise to America. I can't remember what it's Commitment called. To Commitment, Commitment to America. Yeah. America. Maybe all of that doesn't really matter. Maybe they really just need to continue to point out that liberals are kind of radical. And also just, like, look around. How's your family doing? How's your bank account doing? And Speaker Pelosi can huff and puff on her walk with George Stephanopoulos and talk <laughs> about how democracy could die and the fate of the planet is at stake in a midterm election, right? Just like this very over-the-top, uh, I think, rhetoric from her. And most voters look at that and say, it's a bit much. And we put the graphic up for the Republicans. This is a brand new Washington Post, ABC News poll out today for Republicans to be up five on the generic ballot among likely voters is a big deal. In the swing districts, up 21 points. And on the number one issue, the economy, Republicans are up 16 points, up 14 on crime. These are the bread and butter law and order issues that people care about the most. And I think a lot of the noise that you're hearing from the Democrats is sort of uh, their admission tacitly that they know they're in some trouble. So they're throwing these flares out there, distractions to try to get people scared, try to motivate their folks. Uh, but I think ultimately it comes down to inflation, the economy, the Republicans. I mean, you can see the numbers on the screen. Those are striking. Alicia, the guy's point, the Democrats messaging right now is not look how good we are with our issues. It is that uh, MAGA is extremism. That's the first point they have. The next point they have is that uh, basically uh, what they're trying to say is that climate change is the root to all evil. And that's, I guess, the most policy-based point they have. And then from there, they're trying to tell you that, hey, what you think is happening isn't actually happening. Inflation isn't up that much. Or what's happening at the border, they only are going to address the border if they address what Governors Abbott and DeSantis have done by moving migrants from Texas and Florida. It seems like they really don't have that issue platform to sell in the midterms. No, and it really is, um, they're, they're really in a spot. And when you, you showed that quote from that voter who switched over, who said they still consider themselves quite liberal, However, they felt like they were now more of a Republican. I can tell you from talking to voters out there in the middle of the country, in the southern part of the country, definitely when I'm talking, when I say south, I don't mean like your south. I mean like <laughs> Texas and southern Arizona. There are so many voters out there who feel like the Democratic Party has gone to the left to such an, excre an extreme. And these are lifelong Democrats who now say they are changing. And it's a, a case in point, Latino voters. They are constantly telling us over and over again that things have changed so much, but they haven't. 
the party has changed. And so I think the responsibility for Republicans right now from a strategic standpoint is to keep the focus and the collective discipline on the economy and on crime. And if they can do that, then they have a path. I think I think McCarthy would agree with you, and that's why they rolled out this commitment the way they did. I think, Laura, it's just funny. I mean, Nancy Pelosi being booed in New York City. We're in New York City. Wow. These people yeah. ca care about the crazy things she pushes. What does that say for where Democrat leadership is? Well, I can't think of a bigger buzzkill at a concert than inviting <laughs> Nancy Pelosi yeah. on stage. Uh, so I don't know who had that grand idea, but obviously I don't think it worked out quite like she expected it to. But that was the first thing I thought whenever I heard this is, Th this is this is liberal New York City. These are her people. And the fact that Nancy Pelosi did not walk out and it was just full applause and people are just going crazy for her in a positive way, maybe it tells you that the younger generation, perhaps, I don't know, maybe they're realizing all of this spending out of control one day is going to fall in their lap. Uh, maybe they just didn't want uh, their concert ruined by Nancy Pelosi. But I do think that um, it, it is a sign that Perhaps people are waking up around the country. Perhaps people are getting the bigger picture. We, you know, have all commented on the Democrat turn Republican. Alicia, what you said, I think, is exactly right. And I've heard it time and time again, again to many people across the country. I haven't left the Democratic Party. They left me. And I think that people are feeling like that across the board. And, and Guy, like you said, if your life isn't uh, as rosy as sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows as the Democrats are painting it, perhaps you might want to try something different. Well, Laura, on that topic, and Guy, I'll let you respond to this. Here's another Democratic voter. This is another quote. Looking back at the Democrat Party in the 80s and 90s, I think I probably would have been a Democrat. Today, I find myself in the disaffected center. I take some ideas from the left, some ideas from the right, but I don't feel like I identify with any tribe. And that last quote talked about how they identified as a liberal, but not a Democrat. Just how far has this party gone from what would be its base? I think that there are a number of people who feel sort of politically homeless in this yeah. very tribal area. People who might traditionally be a little bit more left-leaning, maybe socially liberal on some things, but then they look around at their tribe, perhaps, and they see some of the really out of control sort of woke uh, enforcement, right, where you must say everything exactly correctly or, or it's a hate crime or whatever. Yeah. And they're not they're not into that. And so I think some of that is driving people away from that coalition. And quickly, Lara, I think with Pelosi getting booed, my take is a little more cynical. I agree most people who booed probably just wanted the music to yeah. resume and not a, some <laughs> political speech. Not being lectured to by but, Nancy. But I also think in New York City, thousands of people have gone and protested Chuck Schumer at his house in Brooklyn yeah. because they're not radical enough. I think some wow. of the boos might have come from left-wingers being like, oh, she's a corporate moderate Democrat. And that's sort of the squad mentality. Another point I think that the Democrats can be wrestling that's with for quite a while here. And and might drive a few more people out of their coalition if they get further dragged toward the squad. I think that's the, that's the point to be made here. You know, in 2016, Alicia, President Trump, saw, President Trump saw Elaine, candidate Trump at the time, which was this America first, bring jobs back to America, secure the border, not necessarily specific to the Republican Party, more so kitchen table ideas that people, hey, I would love for my job to come back. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, I don't want my replacement to train me to send my job overseas. If the Democrats have any version of that, it's it's woke, it's identity and climate. And I just don't feel like that's going to resonate. And I think that's really what we've talked about this whole block. Well, and you also have millions and millions of parents who are so upset about what they saw during the COVID lockdowns and what they have what they are still yeah. continuing to see with regard to education. We were talking about this yesterday. This is such an important issue for people out there because it's so troubling that the parents out there are feeling like they're not in control anymore, and it's their own kids' education. Absolutely. Uh, Laura, last word. I mean, kids kind of are the most important thing in our lives when we're parents, aren't they? It is the uh, end-all, be-all. It is our most important uh, thing as a parent. It's the most important thing for the future of our country. This is our next generation. Um, and I think, Alicia, you're right. Parents don't like being told that they're domestic terrorists for going to a school board meeting and voicing their opinion. Obviously, the goal of that was to get everybody to sit down and shut up and don't step out of line. Um, but I think they're going to make their voices heard on November 8th. And one very quick cautionary note. It's not like the Republican Party's numbers are glittering right now. Exactly. Right? People are not happy with the Democrats. 
Democrats, but it's not like they are racing to the Republicans like, oh, yes, we right, love well, We got to go on this block. We'll get to talk about that more later. Yeah. I think. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.